بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله continuing on our study for uh, of advice for the student of knowledge by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al Wasabi حفظ الله تعالى and amongst the various advice that the Shaykh has given already, uh, various pieces of advice. He first began with a class that you have to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said the second thing being patience with attaining the knowledge and revising it and spreading it. And third is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we've reached the third important piece of advice and it is taqullah subhanahu taqullah azza wa jal it is the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaykh said hafizallah ta'ala he said allah the glorified and almighty said o you who believe if you fear allah he will make for you a criterion furqan and allah the almighty and glorified said o you who believe fear allah and believe in his messenger, he will give you two portions of his mercy and make for you light that you can walk with and forgive you. Letting us know that fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us light from this taqwa and it will be a forgiveness for us. And may Allah bless us with taqwa Allah and his forgiveness and mercy, Amin. And Allah the uh, glorified and almighty said, fear Allah and Allah will teach you. So this is a very important ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to fear him. And the result of that is Allah will teach you. So part of talab al-ilm, part of, of really gaining knowledge is having taqwa. Fear Allah and Allah will teach you. And what better teacher then your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows everything. Then Hakim al alim So if you want to do talab al-ilm, then from those advice, uh, from the, some of the most important advice, of course, after having sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also, as we mentioned, uh, with the sincerity is, is also being patient is that you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have taqwa Allah uh, azza wa jal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem ya ayu al-ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqu tuqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun O you who believe fear Allah the rightful taqwa you know full taqwa and don't die except as Muslims, except in a state of iman and belief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yuan nasa taqu rabbukum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you mankind, addressing all of mankind, fear Allah who created you from a single soul. And all throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to fear him. And that success comes from taqwa azza wa jal. And likewise, which is relevant for our discussion, is ilm. Ilm will come from that. Allah. If you fear Allah, Allah will teach you. So for the talab al-ilm, and this is advice from myself and my brothers and sisters, that if you want to increase your knowledge, it comes through fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there's many people who've gained something of knowledge, but it's really their sins that hold them back from progressing. And some, it's their sins that restrain them from gaining any knowledge. And in a narration, a famous narration of the Salaf, I believe it's on uh, perhaps Imam Shafi'i or Imam Malik, Rahimam Allah Jami'an, and that he was asked about uh, 
about knowledge and, and, it, and the meaning of the statement is, is relevant to our discussion in that he felt this great imam that, that sins prohibited him from, uh, from attaining a high level of knowledge. And these are the great imams. So what about us? What about us? The fourth thing the Sheikh mentioned after Taqwa is persistence and continuity in seeking knowledge. And this is very, very important. He said, the most beloved deed to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was that which was consistent. Perhaps a student is intellectually bright. However, he abandons acquiring knowledge or becomes bored and is not successful in it. However, he abandons acquired knowledge or becomes bored and is not successful in it. And Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I used to be a poor man and accompany the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on an empty stomach. With that, Abu Huraira became the memorizer of the most hadith from amongst the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. Sufyan bin Ayyana accompanied Amr bin Dinar close to 20 years and he became the firmest people with him. And Muhammad ibn Ja'far, Guddar, accompanied Sha'ba 20 years, and his book of Hadith became the book to judge by regarding Hadith, the Hadith of Sha'ba. And that was due to the love of knowledge and desire for it. So truly loving knowledge requires that you continue, continue, uh, continually be on the path of knowledge, traverse that path, and it's a steep path. And then the Sheikh mentioned some poetry. And we did our best to, with the help of my brother, Jazala Khairan, who assisted in translating this piece of poetry. And the poetry, it means in general, he said, how beautiful is the statement of the one who said, so this is a, 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 the statement, my staying up nights to revise the various branches of knowledge is more beloved to me than a wealthy, naturally beautiful woman and the extended embrace. And my aesthetic swaying from solving a difficult issue is sweeter and more desired than the continuous pourer of alcohol. And the sound of my pens on paper is sweeter than passion. And my pecking to remove sand from papers is more enjoyable than a young girl pecking her drum. I spend a whole dark night wide awake and you spend it sleeping and you desire to catch up with me. So that shows you that seeking knowledge requires a person being continually on that path and striving. That while others are sleeping and watching movies and, and doing other activities, the Talib al-Ilm that's serious is busy revising, busy looking up masail, busy uh, sitting in durus and lectures and so forth. So that, that, that's just the reality. And I've seen this countless times in, in my life of people who Allah has favored because they feared him and they had sincerity and they were continuous. So then they surpassed me quite a bit and they spent much less time than I did. And from some of the benefits from the ulama, we were sitting with Sheikh uh, Abdullah, uh, Abdullah um, Sheikh uh, uh, Abdullah bin Mar'i, Abdullah Mar'i, in uh, Hadramaut, in Yemen, in uh, Marqa's uh, Dara Hadith, and we asked the Sheikh, you know, about some of these uh, issues about seeking the knowledge, you know, and we, he gave us a, a, a sitting, alhamdulillah, with the so the mainly Western brothers and specifically Americans. And so we asked the Sheikh, you know, what, what can we do? What do you advise us in seeking knowledge? And one of the things he mentioned was inkita, is adam uh, inkita, is avoiding uh, stopping or ceasing to seek knowledge. And then he mentioned, and I believe his story he was mentioning, and I have it recorded, so I'll have to go back to it for the exact accuracy. But I think he was mentioning of, of being in damage as a, a part of his Talib al-Ilm with Shaykh Muqbil Allah and that he mentioned that there was a brother with him, a Talib al-Ilm, who used to seek the knowledge and used to memorize 50 hadith a day. And if you've ever been to Damaj, you will know that this is, this is very possible for those 
people who are mujtahid and that Allah is favored in such a way. And so this brother used to memorize 50 hadith and then whatever maybe he had to work or maybe whatever he had to leave Talib al-Ilm and lost all of that uh, fawaid. And that's the shahid is the is that he left seeking Talib al-Ilm and he was one of the best as far as memorizing but yet without being consistent. This is the end result. And another situation we asked Sheikh um, Sheikh uh, Ab uh, Abu Salah al Afghani. We were at his home in Medina. And the Sheikh mentioned to us, he said, uh, also, he gave the same advice to not cease to seek knowledge. And he mentioned some of his partners in seeking knowledge, some of his Zumala'ahu, uh, some of his companions in seeking knowledge, that they sought knowledge at the same level probably graduating from Jamal Islamiyah or whatever, whatever their situation, they were at the same level at one point. And he said, now some of those same individuals called him, and this was back in when the Sheikh was doing his PhD in Medina, that they used to call him from Kuwait and ask him questions. Why? Because they had inkita, because they stopped seeking knowledge and he surpassed them because he was continually on that path and sitting with the ulama and... Allah favored him in that respect to where they had to call him and would call him frequently to ask about issues in Messiah. And he did that not in praise of himself, but to show the importance of being consistent on the path of knowledge. Then the Sheikh said, likewise, Allah, the Magnificent, says in his magnificent book to his Prophet wasallam, and say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So therefore, it's important that we supplicate often to Allah to increase uh, ourselves in knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the ilm comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tawfiq, it comes from Allah azza wa jal. The Shaykh said, strive to benefit from knowledge and the law, the glorified, the Almighty said, the example of those who were charged with the Torah then they did not observe it is like the example of the donkey who carries books. The Prophet wasallam used to seek refuge in Allah from knowledge that contained no benefit. So it's imperative that we supplicate to Allah, we fear Allah as much as we can, and we seek beneficial knowledge. And the, and the ulama, they make, um, they clarify for us that knowledge uh, the knowledge that we are uh, that we're referring to here, and the beneficial knowledge is what they refer to as alm al nafia. Beneficial knowledge, meaning knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's the the truly beneficial knowledge, and that doesn't negate the fact that we need uh, knowledge regarding this dunya. We need uh, engineers, we need uh, doctors, we need uh, people in all kind of various different fields of knowledge uh, in order for our societies to thrive and in order to practice our Islam even uh, with safety and security and in, and in a, a proper way. And so we require knowledge of this life as well. But the truly beneficial knowledge, which is referred to in the books uh, of the Salaf, is that al nafia which is the beneficial knowledge of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm al-nafi, rizqan tayyib, wa amalan muntaqabbilan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.